Hello and welcome to your daily dose of commentary. Today we start with the topic, is Lemino supportive of reaction content? So as you guys likely know, a lot of what set off the more recent hubbub about react content was a video by Lemino that was reacted to by Hassan and uh, XQC and basically everyone, right? Because it's he releases like one video every six months or something and he puts a lot of effort into them and they're usually big affairs. So of course the parasites will rip that shit immediately for that juicy, juicy ad rev, that juicy, juicy growth. You gotta get the best blood to feed the machine. But Limino never commented on reaction content during that time. He said nothing as all this debate was happening. And of course, he gained a lot from the conversation because everyone on every platform was discussing Lemino. Showing this video, Lemino's video. And of course they were showing it, but not playing the video. So everyone's like, what is this Lemino video that everyone's reacting to? Why is it so good? Who is this person? So they would go watch it on his channel, which actually helps him obviously. But recently he did a Q&A at 5 million subs. It's funny though, he has 5 million subs, but the amount of views that he gets on his channel is not particularly good. Because obviously, if you want a lot of views, you're gonna spam out videos at the speed of sound. Something can get to you later. But like in, in these months where he hasn't released a video, he's getting 2 million views, which isn't bad. You can live off that, especially depending upon where you, you live. But um, the business of YouTube is not necessarily catered to people who make these big, amazing productions. It's to people who spam out a lot of shit. Although, as I like to say, the best strategy for YouTube is to make big productions and a bunch of little stuff in between. It's why you see like um, this guy, for example, he has these animations. I'm sure you've seen them. They come out like once a month. He has a team of people working on them, get amazing views. But he also, within the last two years, made himself a separate channel, Papa Meat, where I'm sure it's some writers who write some sort of a script and then he just does the voiceover and then b is placed on it and then it goes out. But he, he can trade off his energy, his face, his brand and stuff. And it's very well done. And I, I'm not saying this is like some, he's selling out to do this in some way, but I'm saying this is a smart strategy where you have the high effort animations, but you also have the more easier content to make in the form of commentary. Limino doesn't do that because he's a, he's, he's a pure guy, cares about the art of it, the, the creativity of it, which I very much so respect. I mean, we're speaking from a business perspective here. So back to where we were talking about before. So Limino did a 5 million Q&A where he talked about his views of React content. And I summarized it as so. Limino's Q&A states support of traditionally called commentary videos. In other words, you've previously seen his work and used clips for context for your commentary. He opposes live stream watch parties of his videos. That these both are called reactions now is a failure of language. This is written terribly chat. I was trying to keep it within the, the letter limit of Twitter. Because when you go over, it says read more, but people don't like to click read more and it's, it seems to reduce engagement. I don't know, man, whatever. But he basically came out and said, hey, if, if you want to use clips of my stuff for some reason as a part of a wider production or something, or you want to use my uh, parts of it, as some context, that's fine. But people who just sit and watch my video and live stream it and then re-upload it to YouTube, nah, I'm not okay with that. Which is basically most people's position, right? Or at least people in my kind of camp. There, of course, are other people who are perfectly willing to have people do watch parties of their content and re-upload it, which I will fight and try to convince these people that ultimately they're just hurting everyone, but maybe we're making a difference, who knows, but you get what I'm saying. I also, because I was talking about Limino's views before, I wanted to make this comparison again. So I wrote another tweet. Who has a higher average monthly views? The History Channels, Useful Charts, Limino, Jack Rackham, Starve Harv, Gcon YouTube, or the React channel that re-uploads their videos, VTH History. The answer, obviously, is VT History, aka Reacting Through History. But his full name is Vlogging Through History, but who cares? He doesn't, he isn't vlog, he's a fucking React channel. I continue. The lesson, being a parasite trumps working hard to create. No work, more pay. There are limited eyeballs, demand for history content, recommendation space, and only so many videos can be watched. One day VTH will achieve his dream and pull the majority of the market away from creators by using his spam to uploads. And so this is his most recent content. This is the most recent 12 videos and 10 of them are React videos. He's spamming out one a day. I think this one is just a compilation of his older videos. So he's released one video in the last two weeks that wasn't a reaction and 10 React videos. It doesn't pay to make original content. And, and it grosses me out, like useful charts threw CPG Grey under the bus. Like just like took him, his bodily, chucked him under the wheels and just watched as the wheels crushed over his head in 
useful chances uh, support of vlogging to history over CBG Grey. It's gross. I don't know how a person who has respect for the creativity of YouTube could support these people who are clearly just spamming out videos, just re-uploading other people's videos specifically to avoid work and to draw market share themselves. I, I just don't get it. I don't understand that mindset. The complete absence of creativity. It's gross. Did Rockstar ruin the Keo Perico heist? So Rockstar nerfed the Keo Perico heist in a variety of different ways, basically just reducing the amount of money that you get. But especially when you're doing it solo, I think the amount that you get when you're doing it with other people hasn't really changed that much, likely just because they want to inspire you to play with other people. I personally believe that they did this after I was finished with my Keo Perico grinding, because they didn't want to impact me and my ability to get money, because it would have been a lot more runs to get the amount of loot that I needed to get one of the awards if these nerfs had come in before that. But they, they saw that I was done and they were like, don't worry about it. We got you, Dark Five. We held off on nerfing Kea Perico until you were done. But of course, you guys on YouTube don't know much about that because we're still many, many episodes behind getting to that point. Perks of being a voice actor for GTA 6. Exactly. YouTube prankster gets shot during harassment stunts. I wouldn't normally talk about something like this, but it does involve a YouTuber and I'm Kind of curious what you guys would think of it. It was tweeted out, it's a 20 second clip, just with the caption, LOL. It says, video shows man shoot YouTuber in Dully's town center. I believe this is in America. It's not graphic, so don't worry about it. What's that? Mean? What's that mean? No. So he's holding the phone up to the guy and playing something that's being censored. I guess it's just saying slurs or something. I'm not sure. It's just three white guys. Two guys being YouTubers and one guy who's uh, about to shoot the YouTubers. Get out of my face and block off something. Stop. Stop. Hey, you Stop. Hey, you Stop. Hey, you Stop. Hey, you it just happens so quick. Like, clearly what this YouTuber is doing is harassment. The dude says, stop, 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 I'll call the cops. Like, like it's, it's mul multiple times he gives him one, stop, 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 don't, stop. And he's, he's walking, but then there's like, the most casual thing I've ever seen. Pulls it, bang. Like, the dude didn't die. The way he shoots it so casually, I wonder if he was attempting to do a warning shot or something, like he shoots kind of to the side, right? Like that. But he clips him. And you can die from something like that on a, uh, any, any, you get shot by anything, you can die, right? But this is lol. And I'm just like, who could so casually shoot a person? I know it's not on this person to uplift their life because of a person who's harassing them, but you could have just run away or something, right? There were other options available there beyond shooting these people, regardless how much they are assholes. Like, being an asshole is not deserving of death or grievous bodily harm, in my view. What I'm saying is, I don't understand the mindset of a person who could do this, but at the same time, like, there's no way in hell that these two guys are technically victims in this, right? Because they clearly infringed this guy's personal space. This is where I saw this posted. This person says, America is a diseased country. Someone being a nuisance and being close, even if they're verbally berating you, does not constitute the basis for lethal self-defense. The jury is insane for acquitting him. I don't think the jury is insane for acquitting him. I'll be honest with you. Based on the laws of America, the state's obviously very different, but I, I think... In many countries, this would be perfectly acceptable because of the footage showing that he said, hey, back off, back off, back off, leave me alone, back off, and he was being harassed. D do I think the guy acted well? Would I act the same way? No, fuck no. I, the, I, I wouldn't have a gun for the purposes of shooting people like this. But, it, like, it's such an insane situation to me, right? Like, I would not want to be around anyone who is in this thing, right? All three of these people, I would want to be multiple states away from. They all seem like terrible people. Like, I feel like almost any feelings are justified towards this scene. And that's why it's such an interesting clip to me. In my country, that guy would have sentenced to life prison. I mean, assuming you're in a country where you're not allowed to have guns or use them in defense, I guess. He didn't even aim, so he probably didn't care how badly he could have injured the guy. Honestly, the way he shot here, it's hard from this angle, but it looks like he's trying to shoot past him to me. This doesn't count as defense. In the sense that this guy is in no way a threat to the guy with the gun, you're absolutely right, not defense. I just think it's so insane that a person could just pull a gun and shoot a guy who's annoying them. What type of a mind is like that? The more that I'm reflecting on this, like, like imagine all the times that you were a kid and you just annoyed people for the fucking fun of it. Because you're a kid, you're a snot-nosed brat or something. But this dude's a grown adult. Like, let's, let, we're changing variables in this to make this seem even more crazy. But, like, if you just pulled the gun, absolutely this dude would have just backed off. So there were so many other things he could have done that didn't involve shooting the guy. They would have had the exact same result of him being left alone. And so, I, so I, it doesn't feel justified. 
But at the same time, this dude was warned like 57 times <laughs> and he just kept going. Should not a person be able to go to the shops in peace without being harassed by some random guy multiple times? What? <laughs> All these people suck. Do it with a gun. You're, you're, Loki looks like John Tron. I mean, from this angle, he absolutely does. Like, like with the, yeah, with the hair and the beard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, when it gets to there, when you see the chin, not really. Like this angle now. But, yeah. it's, it's a very fucked up situation. That's why I say I wouldn't normally include someone like this, but it's pretty nuts. If he pulled the gun and the guy kept going at him, I think he could have shot. At that point, you could argue that um, maybe the, the dude would be a threat or something. I, I don't know. It's just a very shitty situation. And they both of them seem to be wrong. The mole shooting guy is still going to prison for two to ten years for shooting into an occupied dwelling. Oh yeah, that's a good point. This wasn't done like on the person's property or whatever. It was done in public. Absolutely. They could have just hit someone at random. Yeah. Okay, so maybe the legal system in America isn't entirely fucked up. You got to imagine that it'd be, a, it'd be a different story though if the two guys who were harassing him had pulled a gun or were some th active threat. But as they weren't an active threat, you're right. So as we were talking about, it totally makes sense for a person to be able to walk through a, a mall without being harassed. But it totally makes sense to be able to walk through a mall without having to worry about a stray bullet hitting you. It's a lesser charge, but still. So this person who said they got the person got acquitted, what did they get acquitted for? Murder or something. He was found not guilty of aggravated assault with a weapon, I think. I see. It's not the Wild West out here, Maddo. There are states where you can, regardless of provocation, like just shoot at a person on your property. And that's fine. Because America is 50 states or whatever. Like the, the rules of what you can do in America very wildly. I am sure, I assure you, in a mall, in a public place, in that circumstance, if you ha pulled a gun and shot in some states, you'd be fine. They were all at fault, but shooting is crazy. Exactly. That is, that is I think, the perfect summary there, Starboy. They were all at fault, but shooting was crazy. Again, the reason I want to show the clip is because it was so hard to root for someone to pick a side. It was just such a weird situation that should never come about. Twitch is adding a new feature to keep you coming back every day. Twitch will soon be doing an experiment to show viewers their watch streak progress in a bar below chat. This will include streak notifications for three to 25 streams watched consecutively. Creators will be able to disable this for their channels. Wow. I can only imagine turning this on will cause people to be pissed because I don't stream consistently at the same time. What does this achieve besides an ego boost? The point is to incentivize people to keep coming back to Twitch and a particular stream. Why would you want it as a viewer? You get a little badge, I assume, a fire thing next to your name, and maybe you get some other perks, I'm not sure, but I don't think this really improves the experience of Twitch. And I would probably want to turn it off. I would hate to think that someone's like, oh, I, I want to go out today, but oh, Matt's going to be streaming. I better watch the stream. I don't even like the idea that my mods might watch the stream on a day when they don't actually want to watch. When they feel some obligation to watch me. The only people I want watching me are those who like my stuff. Like my viewer numbers are not particularly good on Twitch. And I'm like, I totally understand, man. I'm sick and I complain a lot. And I've been playing like a heap of Binding of Isaac. The odds of you finding me online doing something particularly interesting is low. I totally understand. I would appreciate if you catch me on YouTube though. 400 viewers is small. So some of this is going to be COVID, but... So here's my viewer graph. You can see in this middle here, things were doing a little bit better. <laughs> That's because COVID and I was streaming basically nothing but GTA 5 and I had energy. My viewer numbers were a lot better during that time. And I do think things have improved a bit over the last year. Yes, I was down here. This, th but this is when I left for YouTube and I, I streamed on YouTube during this time. But this, these last two months have been shocking for me. Like you can see there's just general trend down because I've just been so unwell. I wonder how much of my illness has been a uh, psychosomatic versus actual illness. We'll, we'll find out when I get a blood test tomorrow, hopefully. Can you visualize images in your head? So another person has discovered aphantasia, this being John Green. We've talked about this many times in the Rambles series, for those who've been watch, well, watching and or listening to Rambles for a long time. John Green says on Twitter, It's baffling to me that some of y'all see stuff in your mind. You see it? The way your eyes see? I always thought visualize meant thinking of the words, ideas, feelings associated with a thing, not actual visuals. I am such a total five on the scale, I didn't know one to four existed. So we usually use the example of a red star. Try to visualize in your mind's eye a red star. What does it look like? But this picture shows the internals of a person's head. Five being nothing, four being an outline of a, an apple, three being like a colorless apple, two being a colorful apple without that much detail, and one being super detail 
Apple in head. This is what aphantasia is, right? The um, inability to have a mind's eye to visualize things in your head. And people who don't have a mind's eye continuously being surprised that other people do. When I visualize things in my head, like I can play movies in my head and make stories. When I go to sleep, the main thing that I do is I think of stories. I put myself into books and play out stories in my head. But I question whether I'm two or one or even three maybe because I don't know how colorful they really are. Like if I try, I can put color to my mental images, but they don't naturally come with color, I don't think. And it isn't like watching a movie in the sense of it's a clear, perfect image. All detail is always there. It's like anything that I'm not paying attention to directly does not exist. It, it is such a strange thing to try to describe to people. Because I've talked about this before and I've said I'm a one, but I realize that's like visualizing one thing. Visualizing a red star, I can do because I'm focusing on a red star. But the more complex I try to visualize something, the harder it is. It's almost like my mental imagery combines with ideas. So the faces aren't there, but the idea of a face is there. So there's no distinction there. It's so hard to explain. So I'm not sure I'm the optimal mental imagery kind of guy. Although there is the hyper aphantasia where apparently people do actually play movies in their heads and I'm definitely not that, right? It doesn't seem that important to my day-to-day -day life though, honestly. I can totally understand how a person could go through their whole entire life without needing it. But I question how people would do the mental rotation stuff. You know, questions like multiple choice where you've got like, here is a bunch of images. If you rotate this to the right, what does it look like? I see the images then I build the thing in my head and then I just rotate it. It's, it's just a very interesting phenomenon. And it's always funny when people find out about it. But I question sometimes how much of memory is just me doing this, where I don't remember a thing specifically, but I know it happened. And so I mentally construct how that memory should look like. Is that what memory is? I should know this. I took a psych course a bajillion years ago. Answering your most interesting questions. Rambles used to be filler content with your rambles cut from streams and videos. Now for each ramble you prepare a list of topics and talking points and specifically say something about them. Given that the rambles are now on a separate channel, don't you think they've become more of a liability for you than something you enjoy or benefit from? Why do you prefer the new format to the previous one, rambling on different streams while you're playing, than making a video compilation? So I've always liked rambling about topics, but when I'm too involved in a game, that impacts my ability to speak coherently on a topic. If I'm too focused on a topic, that impacts my ability to play the game effectively. It is true to say that in the past, I have lost speedruns because I've got so involved in talking about some particular topic. Both the rambles and the gameplay suffer if I'm rambling during my gameplay. The reason why it was not as bad in the past is because a lot of the times when I would ramble, I'd be rambling during parts that didn't matter in my speedrun or during just content in general, like learning speedruns or something where it didn't really matter if the ramble impacted my gameplay. But these days, when I'm streaming something, a game, I'm streaming for a specific purpose. Any time that I spend rambling is content that can't be in the YouTube video, because they're not ramble videos, right? On the main channel, right? So like, for example, if a pivotal moment happens in a particular point where I'm playing GT Online, when time comes to edit that point in the video, my rambling there will get in the way. it will be like, oh, well, I, he's rambling about some random bullshit that he's been talking about for the last five minutes. And if I don't keep that last four minutes and 30 seconds of context, the 30 seconds he's speaking here won't make much sense. But the thing he's doing is very important for people to see on YouTube or they're not gonna understand what's happening next. What do I do here? And it just makes the content worse, you see? By separating the two, both of them are ultimately better off. Maybe it doesn't work as well with this current TikTok sort of generation where they want like subway surfers below. People have said like, I have trouble just watching you ramble when it's, you're just in the black void or whatever. Like I liked the gameplay being there. Fair enough. But I do think this is better for both aspects of the content. For a time at least, I did actually have Matt going through my VODs to find any other rambles that I made outside of these sort of sections where I'm dedicated to rambling. But it just wasn't worth the time. He'd go through like a hundred hours of footage and come back with like maybe enough rambles for an episode and those rambles would probably wouldn't be, be that good. If I have something important to ramble about and I have enough information to talk about it, I'll do it in this section. This section is also very good because often when I go, oh, this could be a ramble, I will put it in my list and I will go read stuff or jot down some notes about things that I need to cover or say to make sure that I, I, I cover things effectively. Where while I'm talking about it while playing a game, I might miss 
key details, if it's just spur of the moment. I always really liked in your older rambles when you would respond to chat and throw them in while running, but there's just a lot less rambles in games now. It is certainly the case that my rambles are far less of a conversation between me and my viewers. Like I'll, I'll ramble the entire thing and then like look over a chat and see if someone said something of importance. But generally speaking, I know what I want to say and so I will say it. And it doesn't really matter what chat is saying at that point. At times I will be uncertain about information and I'll go chat, am I correct about this? and be interested. But you're right, when I was doing speedruns, often I wouldn't have anything to talk about. The part of the speedrun would be somewhat boring. So I'd be like, okay, is anyone saying anything good in chat? Anyone bring up a good topic? Uh, anyone want to talk about something? And then I would just talk to people and that would become a ramble. There is far less of that because I'm not bored. I'm not looking for something else to talk about. I already have things to talk about. There's a lot less of that on Twitch in general nowadays, to be honest. Back when Twitch was smaller, and therefore the largest content creators were smaller, and I guess all channels were smaller, I guess there was more of a community feel and more conversations between viewers and streamers. But as the people at the top get bigger and bigger, necessarily they are the ones who watch the most. And they are also the ones being put into situations where having such a community feel and conversations are less and less possible. But I'm sure there are still small streams that have a lot of conversations with uh, people in the chat. Regardless of how my rambles may change over time, the one thing that never changes is that I want you to hit that like and subscribe button. Thank you for watching, and I wish you all the best.